There's a lot of advice on the internet about becoming a good software engineer. But here's the problem. All of the advice is exactly the same. You've already seen it. I've been a software engineer for five years, and I've worked in big tech for two of those years. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I wanted to share everything that I've learned. The completely unfiltered version. We're gonna dive deep into the it factor that you need to get a job in tech. First off, landing a job is all about statistics. I used to think that having a good GPA and taking relevant computer science classes meant that I was fit to land a job. But the reality is every job market is different, every company is different, and every role is different. The requirements for getting a job isn't just based on your skills. Back in 2021, there was a huge hiring spree for software engineers. It didn't really matter what your skills looked like, as long as you had a degree. If you had a degree or prior experience, recruiters were eating you up like candy. To get a better sense of what the market looks like, let's take a look at this tech layoffs graph. In Jan 2022, all the way until June 2022, things were looking pretty good. And in Jan 2023, it hit a huge spike. So you can see here, a ton of companies are laying off and a ton of employees have been laid off. Now, the layoff graph has reduced significantly, so things are starting to look a lot better going into 2024. But again, it's still not at those 2022 and even 2021 levels. During this time, I had several recruiters reach out to me about interviewing at big tech companies. And I also ended up doing over 30 interviews. But the game has now changed, and I feel like we've all been in denial about it. All right, let's see. So I'd like a walking treadmill, of course, a couch, a TV, and make that a smart TV. And then lastly, I only want to work for about two hours a day. I think that's enough to be productive. Send. Are you out of your mind? The truth is you and I are no longer special, which means that we have to take a different approach. Universities teach us to get the skills required for a job, but they never actually prepare us for the harsh reality of what the market could look like after we graduate. What are companies looking for when there's a ton of talent floating around in the market and not enough money to actually pay for all that talent? Well, I figured my coworkers might have a good answer to this. If I was a company who had a limited amount of resources, but there's a bunch of talent, I would sort by the people who are most likely to stay so that we don't have to retrain, we don't have to continuously rehire, because uh, that whole process is a money drain as well. Second would be how well do you collaborate, uh, which would be something that we'd see in the interview, because uh, if you collaborate, there's good synergy, we could see you on board and being part of the team, I'll be more likely to hire you. Those are the two things I would optimize for. The key is to look ahead at what most software engineers are doing and level up your skills. I talked about this in a previous video, but I can't emphasize how important it actually is. Look at these two job listings. One is for a software engineer and one is for a senior software engineer. They both have different requirements, but they both overlap when you look at the software engineer nice to have section. It's no longer a nice to have, but a requirement to know more than whoever you're competing with. Not only that, but it's important to bring new insights to a role. And yes, I'm talking about the AI revolution. AI is not like the NFT or blockchain market. It's been around for a long time and it's disrupting multiple industries already. In simple terms, it's a quicker, more efficient way to obtain information than we were doing before. Kind of like the transition from using a library to using the internet. To prove my point, let's use a cheat code. So we're going to navigate to levels.fyi to see the breakdown between what software engineers are getting compensated for right now versus ML AI engineers, as well as how often they're actually getting hired. So here we're looking at the software engineering salary. So note the median total in the US is about $170,000. So as you can see, there's a date. So on the 29th, 27th, the 12th, a ton of hires between November 22nd and December 5th, and then here as well, 11. So there's like a steady stream of people getting hired. I wouldn't say that people are getting hired at a very fast rate though. And same with the salaries, they're pretty decent salaries. It looks like they're making 200K, but they're also out in California working at Tesla. So that'll make a difference. So let's look at AI ML. So 170 was the total medium comp for software engineering and 249 is the total median comp. And look at that 90th percentile. For 
$453,000. That's a lot. So let's scroll down. Two hours ago, four hours ago, four, 12 hours ago, look at the pace at which people are getting hired and look at how many entries there are. There are a thousand entries. People, literally this entire page is just filled with people that got hired today, which was obviously not the case for the software engineering roles. So you do the math. Obviously it's a lot more lucrative to be an AI ML engineer right now. Next up, treat your work differently than you would a school assignment. With school assignments, you really only need to worry about a very specific problem to solve. It's like conducting an experiment in a controlled environment. At work, coding is a lot different. You have to understand how to interpret multiple services, how they all connect together, what the infrastructure looks like, how customers interact with the products, and even how to understand if the system is failing. Phew, okay, that's a lot. Well, what if you're still having trouble learning coding on the job? Today's sponsor, Codecademy, has just the solution for you. You're probably tired of scrolling through sites that claim to teach you how to become a software engineer in 30 days. Thankfully, Codecademy has an all-in-one platform solution with tons of options to progress your learning. They're kind of like that friend in class that picks up the material quickly and can help you understand it in a way that makes sense. One great feature, career pads, are complete collections of courses that cover everything you need to be ready for specific tech careers. The most popular is their full stack engineering career path. Yeah, but what if I wanna branch out and learn more about like mobile app development or web development? No problem, they have courses on that too. In fact, they have an entire catalog of courses that you can take with an interactive editor that allows you to learn by doing. I've also preached learning to code by actually doing the thing. And this platform really embodies that same practice. Okay, you guys, look at the different languages and technologies that they use on their site. Isn't that so cool? So let's say I just pick one, right? So let's pick JavaScript. And then here you have all this information about which courses to take, which learning material that you can use to actually learn JavaScript. It's really cool. And you can do this with any of the languages and technologies that are listed. So I'd highly recommend checking them out. It's a very organized website and it's really gonna help you out in your coding journey. And the best part is the first 300 people to sign up get one month of Codecademy Pro for free. And who doesn't like free stuff? And that's not all I learned. Working on interesting projects is up to you. Yes, you heard me right, it's up to you. Just because you landed a job at a big tech company, it doesn't mean that you're gonna work on the coolest technology. And just because you work at a no-name company, it doesn't mean that you won't get to work with things like AI. For me, I learned that I have to ask for what I want. And I don't just mean telling your manager that you wanna work on cool things, but finding problems in the system, coming up with a design for a solution, and figuring out who it's gonna impact, and then presenting it to your managers and peers in a way that will actually persuade them to go along with your idea. So in conclusion, this is what I propose that we show our stakeholders. And I think it's a pretty miraculous idea. Wait, wait, wait. So you wanna use AI with party hats? Well, not just AI, but also our state-of-the-art blockchain algorithm. You have a blockchain algorithm? Well, not yet, but that's what you're here for. <laughs> Okay, hold on. How exactly are you gonna use AI and blockchain with those party hats? Looks like someone was asleep during the presentation. It's easy. All I have to do is just make sure. See, it's simple. I don't get paid enough for this. I know it's a lot of work, but it really is worth it. At the end of the day, you're there to do a job. No one else is gonna look out for your career progression. So you'll have to advocate for yourself to be able to work on something more challenging. With career progression, the sentiment is very similar. It's not always about talent, but it's working on things that will create a large impact on the team. And it's also about being seen as a reliable member of the team. I actually found a clip from the Ice Coffee Hour that really hit me the other day. I think the problem with IQ is that we use it as, sub as a substitute for all of these other important constructs that most people ignore. Like EQ is at the top of the list there, where if you look at actually like success in life, EQ correlates more highly with success than IQ does. Let's break this down for a second. He talks about EQ being a lot more important than IQ in terms of being successful, because EQ gives you an opportunity to understand people and how to navigate relationships in a corporate setting. Now, I'm not talking about playing politics or manipulating people, but it doesn't matter how smart you are IQ-wise, if you don't know how to effectively communicate with customers and coworkers, or you don't know how to manage your emotions. Part of working on things that are impactful may mean working on boring things like fixing pipelines or writing up 
good documentation for customers. That doesn't really take a genius. It may not be the cool, sexy type of work, but understanding what your team needs versus what you want to do could mean the biggest difference for your career progression. It's being self-aware that will help you be the most successful. This is a hard pill that I've had to swallow throughout my career, especially as I become a more senior member of the team. It's not always enough to just be good at coding. You have to engage in a much more meaningful way to actually show your value on the team. And lastly, your ability to adapt is super important. Technology changes fast. I would hear this all the time as I was getting into the industry, but it never really sunk in because I was just trying to learn whatever technology the company was using at the time. But the truth is, if you want to stay relevant, you have to be the one driving the change. I recently started reading a book called Atomic Habits. An example that really hit me was where a pilot plans to fly from LAX to New York City, but at takeoff, the plane adjusts just a few degrees to the south and continues in a straight line. In this case, the pilot would end up in Washington, D.C. instead of New York City. This example showcases how one small change in the wrong direction can incrementally make a huge negative impact. But the same is true of positive changes. If you decide to take one step at a time towards learning something new every day, then achieving the goal of learning entirely new technology won't seem so hard a few months from now. I'll leave you with this last clip from a TED Talk that I watched recently to sum everything up. You see, what stands between us and achieving even our most ambitious dreams has far less to do with possessing some magical skill or talent and far more to do with how we approach problems and make decisions to solve them. And because of the continuous and compounding nature of all those millions of decisions that we face on a regular basis, even a marginal improvement in our process can have a huge impact on our end results. And this advice applies to everything that I've already explained. Whether it's learning a new technology, progressing your career, approaching your work in an enterprise environment, engage in making small, positive, incremental changes in your life every day. Only then will you be able to tackle the beast at the very end.